day guys <laughs> awesome sorry for the little bit of the delay today my bad but yeah here we are we're in the last week like i said i don't think we're going to finish matthew maybe we'll push to next week also but um yeah i think maybe we should then we just kind of finish matthew okay so let's pray and get into the word today father thank you for your word thank you that it is alive more and more and more and you're just showing me that your word is so alive and i love that about it and i love that about you um be with us as we go into it today in the name of jesus we pray amen okay so for those that don't know again i'm reading out of the new king james we are on matthew 7 so we are going to go through hopefully we'll get through while well, we get through all of matthew 7 okay so matthew 7 verse 1 judge not that you be not judged hang on let me put my phone on so I otherwise things are going to happen okay Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at this? Okay, this is going to get complicated, right? So judge not. Okay, so obviously we're living in a world where there is a lot of um, touchy people, right? Where like the phrase nowadays is don't judge me. Okay. And... Um, I mean, if you're quite close to me, then you know that I don't subscribe to that at all. I will always say I am judging you because the point of community is for us to judge, right? It's for us to evaluate a situation and make a decision based on how we evaluate that situation. And that's what judging is, right? Is you have to look and say, oh, okay, this is happening or this is what's not happening. So here where he's saying judge not um, that you be not judged. I think verse 3 to 5 is a very important part of the context, okay? Because it, it makes us understand what he's saying when he's saying judge not, okay? So verse 3, then he says, Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but you do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So Andy Stanley has an amazing teaching on this. Um, I don't even remember what it's called. But just Google Andy Stanley um, speck in your brother's eye or whatever. Um, where he puts this in the context which is then I think where my mind goes as I read this now. Obviously because I've listened to the teaching. But he goes into this whole thing of look. Basically what Jesus is saying here is. Us as Jesus followers, we have an opportunity to show grace, right? So grace doesn't ignore a sin or that somebody is, is continually doing or, or a place that they're stuck in, you know. We do want to see each other grow. We should be challenging each other as we go through life. But I'm not here to tear you down as a person. I'm here to help you as the person overcome or conquer whatever it is that is um you know blocking your view if i can say that or distorting it's not blocking it's actually distorting your view because if i have a speck or a log in my eye right and i think that's what he's saying here he's saying if i'm aware of my own weaknesses and my own faults when i see your weaknesses and your faults then i will and i will treat you with the same grace that i have understood that god treats me okay so when he in verse one, when he's saying judge not, he's saying um, don't find fault with anyone except yourself almost, you know, or you will expose your own criminal tendencies, your own disposition. OK, um, and luckily, you know, the, the beauty of communities we have here, uh, we, we're allowed to do that, um, you know, in certain relationships. So I have people where it's literally that I have to expose myself to them. So that they can help me in that and in that moment i don't want them to say oh i'm not going to judge because i have a log in my eye i'm actually exposing myself to them because it's a safe space because i'm inviting them into that ju the journey of me becoming more like christ right and that's what discipleship is okay verse six 
Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Guys, again, I think here's the thing, right? Is there's a beauty in community. Just like, I mean, just like I spoke now, the, the people, it's not everybody that I will expose myself to. You know what I mean? There's a certain group of people that, and they know who they are. Well, hopefully they know who they are. That when I need to expose myself to them, I will do so because I understand that they and un that they understand that where I am in that process is a process to holiness. It's a so don't give what is holy to dogs. If if you are sharing your heart, if you're trying to entrust your heart to people that don't understand where you are, that don't understand the context, that don't care, you know, which is an unfortunate truth, then you will find that they will trample it, trample on it underfoot, and then turn and tear you to pieces. Okay, um, this actually happened to me between my sister and I a while ago, and it really broke me because I didn't do it intentionally, where she had shared something with me, um, and the next day something happened, and it made me think of a situation, you know, which was the situation she had shared, um, you know, and I kind of just threw it out there on the table, and she was so shocked. She was just like, I can't believe you just did that. Like, I, in sharing that with you, I was being so vulnerable, and here you've just taken this situation and basically disregarded it you know um treated it like you like like it was pearls that i had just thrown to swine um so it's not just people that we don't know i think it's even in people that we do know we need to understand the dynamics and expectations of relationships so that we don't find ourselves being torn to pieces um by the dogs or the swine that we've entrusted with our holy or precious things Okay, verse 7. I mean, yo, guys, there's a lot here, hey, and, I, and I'm so sorry. I'm not doing it justice. I know that I'm not, but, um, you know, I pray that as you sit with God and as you read through the scripture that Holy Spirit makes it, alive, makes it come alive to you. Verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and him who knocks will be opened. Right. He is not saying for everyone who asks will receive what they ask for. For everyone who seeks, they will find what they were looking for. For everyone who knocks, you know, every door will be opened to them in the manner and the way that they wanted to. He's saying, as we ask, you know, we will receive. Because remember, the th I think the thing is here also is that the alignment in our hearts, right? If I align myself to the will, purposes, and plans of God, and out of that place, ask in, ask, right? Then, yes, I'm going to receive because, again, I'm asking for what he has already promised me. You know, if that, I hope that makes sense. So, um, as I seek, you know, Matthew 6, he's saying, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. So, what am I seeking? You know, am I seeking things that... That, that are aligned to what the heart of God is seeking for me to have. You know, sometimes we seek and we find strange things. Sometimes we seek and we find bonus things. Okay, it doesn't stop us from seeking, from asking and from knocking. And I mean, again, I don't remember where it was now. I think it was here. Yeah, so Matthew 6 verse 8. Remember I told you the cross-reference thing, guys. Don't ever get over that. Cross-referencing is amazing. But Matthew 6 verse 8 says, Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things that you have that you have need of before you ask Him, right? And we were saying there that yes, He knows, but you, He still wants you to ask. So here, He's saying again, you know, ask me. Ask me. Don't just assume. I really do think that there are certain blessings and releases in our lives that we will only get if we ask. Like around my birthday, I don't try and surprise me. Ask me what I want for my birthday. I will tell you what I want for my birthday. You know what I mean? So it's that type of a thing. Okay, verse 9. Or what man is there? So remember, he's just spoken about that asking, seeking, knocking, right? So again, he's giving us more meat on the bone. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? So I don't understand that I'm not a parent, right? But I can uh, understand that just in terms of like my really good friends, my godchildren. If they ask me for something, if it's in my power and in my ability to give it to them and I know that it will work out well for them, then I will want to do everything that I can to obviously, you know, bless them in that way. 
If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Amen. Verse 12. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Or, as we colloquially say it, do to others as you want them to do unto you. Okay, and again, he's saying, for this is the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets that earlier he told us he came to fulfill, right? The law under Moses' thing, prophets, we've got Elijah, Ezekiel, all of those guys are in there. Okay, so part of what he came to fulfill is this do unto others as you have them do unto you. Verse 13, enter, oh, this is 13 and 14, my man. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. So who will you be? Like the easiest thing for me is I'm just like, if I feel like I'm walking through a wide door and there are many people, then it means I'm not on the, <laughs> on the path to the narrow gate. Right? Yes, there's detours all over. But the, 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 where we are going is we want to get to the narrow gate, right? Because the narrow gate leads to life. And when you're saying difficult here, um, I actually wonder if this says anything here. Um, you know, difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. I, again, I think he's saying, guys, understand that being a Jesus follower is sacrifice. You know what I mean? It's not all hunky-dory. I'm calling you to die daily. I'm calling you to crucify your flesh daily because I'm calling you to ask me for bread, for sustenance daily. Okay. Um, oh, my man. Verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So yesterday, uh, deep at church, William McDowell, his, pre his sermon or whatever was actually very much on this. And I, and I loved it because he's saying it. So they're saying, yeah. So everybody will, can look like a sheep, right? But not everybody is actually a sheep. Some people are, sheep, are wolves just in sheep's clothing. How do we know the difference? Look at the fruit in their life. What fruit? Go to Galatians. Go to Galatians 5. Love, joy, peace. Look at the fruit of the Spirit. It is evident. Guys, you cannot say you are a Jesus follower. If you are a believer, it will show in your life. It has to show in your life. It makes absolutely no sense that somebody will stand and say, I'm a believer, but there is no fruit in their life. Everybody's bearing fruit, right? So it's not like we're not bearing fruit and we are bearing fruit. Everybody's bearing fruit. The difference is that there's good fruit and there's bad fruit. Okay, so here, verse 16, it's so strong because, you know, the, the notion that people pretend, I mean, for goodness sake, you know, you see somebody on Instagram and you see them in real life and you're like, that is not what you look like on social media. You know, we look at the lives of people and we think, oh, I want that life. You don't know their process. You don't know their sacrifice. Or you don't know maybe they're lying. You know, um, but here he's saying, okay, it doesn't matter what people look like, yo. It does not matter because everybody can look like a sheep. Everybody is in the pen. Okay. But some of these people are wolves. Like I remember even when this, when the injustice conversation started happening around the world, it was amazing for me because people that I know, hey, and like quite closely, I would see them comment. I would see how they comment and what they comment. And I'd just be like, this person is actually, there is no love in what they are saying. They are actually just out here to spread hate. You know, and it's unfortunate, but it's true. So he's saying, look at their fruits. Because the people, the sheep that are mine, my sheep, those sheep, right? Because sometimes it's not even necessarily that it's a wolf that's in sheep's clothing. Sometimes it's just a sheep, but the sheep doesn't belong to Jesus, right? Because otherwise, why would he say, he says, my sheep hear my voice. Shepherds, they feed their sheep in the same areas, like they hang out together and stuff so that they're not lonely during the day or whatever they call it. You know, so Jesus is saying, hey, if you want to know if somebody is mine, look at the fruit. Look at the fruit in their life. Okay, 
And then he goes on to say, obviously, you don't get grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles, okay? And Jeremy Pearson's long ago, he did such an amazing thing, or that was the first time I heard it, where he was saying, if you go out into an orchard and you look there, you can bring all these tools and stuff, right? And inject the fruit and see all of those things and to trying to determine what type of an orchard it is. Or you can just look at the fruit. If it's round and it's orange, like actual orange, not the pinkish one, right? Then you can look and see that, oh, this is an orange orchard. You know, how do you know that? Because of the fruit. The fruit that is coming from the trees are oranges. You won't have avocados coming from orange trees. So verse 17, even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Oh God, one day. Ash, that it hurts me, hey. I think to myself, hey, now I know bad trees and they're just happy to go, you know, to live like they're going to hell. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. And that is where we will close today. Um, by their fruits. You will know them. Guys, this is such an important question. And the thing is, if you are serious about it, you will also be open to the feedback. Right? Because it's not like people are coming to you and being like, oh, Katie, that was not very loving. Listen to what people are saying. If somebody's, and I know we're out over time, I'm sorry. But if somebody's standing saying to you, listen, you know, you actually, you hurt my feelings. Oh, when I did what? And they say, oh, you know, you, this is how you handled the situation. And then I'm like, okay. And then somebody else comes to me and says, Katie, you know, my feelings were actually hurt. When Then I'm like, then, I mean, I can see that, okay. So it means this is an area where my fruit isn't good, you know. Do I change? How do I change? John 15, you know. Go back to the vine. Go back to the, to the root. See, what am I plugged into? Where am I bearing fruit out of? What is the root of these things? Do I need to uproot things? Do I need to, you know? I mean, oh, guys, earlier in Matthew, again, we spoke about the threshing and the, all of that. It's, it's all there. So what fruit are you bearing? If you don't know, ask the people in your life. Listen. Listen to what people are talking to you about because that is such an amazing way of understanding or of identifying your fruit. If every time people come and talk to me, all they're doing is gossiping, it means that that's the ground that I'm breeding. I'm saying, okay, yes, guys, the ground is ready here. Let's go. You know what I mean? So if I don't want people to go, if people are gossiping and that's all they do when they come to you, guys, it's an indication of the fruit that you are bearing. You know, listen to the conversations that you have because what the art is, there we go, Matthew 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. You know, so there's all these things. It's fruit, guys. There is always fruit. And we just have to be conscious of what fruit we are bearing. And if we don't like the results, then you have to do something to change it. Because by God, Jesus says, you will know them by their fruits. You will know them by their fruits. And we spoke about this earlier. Um, where we again, you know, where we said, yes, like they are, I understand, they are people, they don't talk to me, they run away from me, they all, and I'm like, hey, it's really unfortunate, but when they need prayer, those people, they know where to find me, and they find me, and they say, Katie, pray for me, and every time that happens, I'm like, yes, it means somewhere I am sowing the right type of seed, we don't always get it right, okay, the, the journey of life is about our pursuit of holiness. It's about our pursuit to get there. So, yes, we don't always get it right. But, you know, as long as we're trying, dude, as long as we're trying and we're passionately, passionately pursuing it. Okay. I must stop there. Otherwise, we will be here until 7. Okay, guys. So, that's the end. Uh, clearly. Hi, clearly. Uh, you've just motivated me to do what God has been. Oh, that's awesome, man. I love that. I love that. Amen. I really pray that he, you know, just remember that he gives you the grace. His grace empowers you to to actually do that. So that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with me. Guys, 8 o'clock is the Bible quiz. Okay, from 8 to past 8. I hope you can join us. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's pray and close it out. Jesus, thank you so much. You are so great. 
Oh, Dad, help us. Help us that the fruits that we bear will show the world, will show people in our circles, will show the church even that we belong to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us be found in the good trees. Please, we're bearing good fruit. Please, Lord. Amen. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. I'll see you at 8 o'clock.